What's up, everyone? Happy Saturday, happy 3 p.m. Saturday, uh, happy broadcast time. Welcome to the show, and uh, let's do a quick round of uh, standard introductions here. My name is Commander Josh Hawkins. I am joined by Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo, Commander Greatest. Hello, Liam. <laughs> and Commander <laughs> Turgeon Starstone. Hello, folks. That's how I keep them on their toes. Just, uh, they gotta guess oh, yeah. who's gonna go first. You never know who he's getting first. Never know. It's such an excitement every time. But we were, uh -huh. we were totally prepared. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, we were prepared for you not being here, by the way, Great Test. We had your soundboard up and running, and uh, we were going to make you introduce <laughs> yourself by robot voice. Yeah. Fair enough. Welcome. Like this, in fact. That's how easily replaceable I am. That's, Fair enough. That's right. right. Well, either I'll that keep or that in mind. we bring on Nuke, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh. We, we have multiple methods to replace you, but... Uh... <laughs> you know, we can never replace I see how it Great is. Test. Never re replace Great Test. In fact, you know what, gentlemen? I think that these two fine folks that have been joining me on the broadcast for God knows how long they've been on the show deserve an absolutely humongous round of applause for their contribution to the so show. So, good job, you two. Thank you very much, Turgeon and Great Test. I applaud you. Yeah. I applaud you. Yeah, yes. That was, that was very kind of you, sir. Yeah. Yes. We, we should have this. Right, that's enough. Yeah, something like that, <laughs> we, right? We, we have to make our own applause because we can't hear chat. That's kind of sad, actually. It's okay, yeah. they're applauding you, and Spooky's giving you the, uh, the live yeah, on Yeah, we can see the applause. You can see <laughs> the applause, that's right. Giving us the clap. Thank you for giving us yes, the clap. Yes, now you've gotten the clap. <laughs> not something that, not the first time you've gotten that on the broadcast, I'm sure. Is, is, is that technically a clap back? Oh, <laughs> you can have your clap back. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Or maybe it does. Uh, you never know. <laughs> Anyhow, what are we doing on the show today? Well, we're going to rant and rave and bitch and complain and talk about Elite Dangerous and explore. And uh, maybe we'll talk about what's coming up in Star Citizen 3.5. You know, I was this close today. Well, <laughs> this close yeah, to well, paying 45 yeah. bucks. I got to tell yeah. you. Uh, Scorpius, he's already fallen over that line. Has he's he? Already got it? Yeah, he was I hear, streaming. I hear he was he was streaming it the other night, but then it threw a 13 gig download patch at him. Ouch! Uh, oh, it so, did. So, so we spent an hour watching a progress bar and just talking bollocks on the stream. Oh, <laughs> <which fun. laughs> sounds like it something was we've done before. With the Scorpius, prime yeah, time it entertainment. Was. It was great. Yeah, he made it. He made it to the end, and he had a decent frame rate in the little the little cabin that you wake up in. Oh, the, the, the little cabin. Uh, so right? Does everyone start that's in that cabin now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very crowded. Kind place. of the way it is. But, you know, it, he <laughs> left it so that he could actually have a proper first impressions in another stream because it, that was just right, literally, it was way over the ends of his mm. time of stream. But, yeah, so it's looking good. Um, new flight model in there today, or yep. is that 3.5 drops today? So. Well, we don't know if it drops today. Uh, people are saying possibly Two hours. tomorrow. <laughs> But, hours, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, either way, a new flight model, right? They're adding atmospheric flight with proper gravity uh, affecting the flight model. Mm. So that's it's yeah. going to be interesting. Well, that's good. That's that's I want to try that because that's that must be feeling very unique. Well, I don't think any game has ever properly done such a thing. No. Uh, Elite Dangerous has it, but they don't have atmospheric flight. So exactly, it's not. It's not. It's only you know gravity, gravity. affecting you, but That's not it. also at, uh, aerodynamics. That's kind of cool. Mm. Yeah, well, you can like yeah. properly fly. We, we yeah, don't so know if you're flying a, how... a Type Nine in Star Citizen. When you're trying to go through the atmosphere, it'll feel like you're flying <laughs> Type Nine through the I atmosphere. Mean, technically, it's probably gonna fly. Uh, feel like you know a flight simulator. But yeah. then again, you're not flying airplanes, you're flying spaceships, so that's kind of cool. The thing is, I mean, are you going to be doing that much atmospheric flight? It's it's a space game, right? So I mean, No, but you can. That's the point. Well, you can. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you, you absolutely can. Um, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how many people actually are flying in atmosphere the majority of the time. But uh, yeah, it, it'll, uh, it'll certainly add a nice, uh, a nice feeling to it, right? Oh, we got a terraforming candidate right here. Let's go. Um, oh, we got a couple. Uh, okay, and this one is not too far out. Yeah, they're, they're like kittens. You don't tend to find one. 
That's actually Therefore, true. We can, uh, they usually come in twos and threes. I'm uh, just bookmarking these terraforming candidates. Oh, what? I've got a grumble though about that. I have. If you want to go into, to go into, oh, let's have a bitch. I, I was grumbling about it in the mostly aimless chat the other day about the, the silliness that Stellar Forge comes up with when it determines what's a terraformable and what isn't. Hmm. What is uh, that silliness? Uh, Do tell. Well, uh, it's well. Let's put. I, I'll, I'll look up the pictures that I posted here because they are they are absolutely silly uh, for sure. Because I found a system that had uh, two, it had an Earth-like and two terraformables, one either side of the Earth-like, uh, which is a nice enough find, as you do. But uh, the one on the inside was very much like Venus. It had, uh, where are we? Let me just find the stats. 793 Kelvin surface temperature, okay. 214 atmospheres, you know. Mostly carbon dioxide with a bit of sulfur dioxide atmosphere. Not a nice place. 1.3 Earth masses, 1.23 gravity. Not nice, but you can see, okay, yeah, people might want to try and terraform that. It's a bit of an ask, but, you know, they could. Well, depending on the so, technology, maybe it's very easy to yeah. terraform that planet, right? So, so that, that's the one. That was planet two. Uh, quite like Venus. Ridiculously hot. Then you go out to the Earth-like Earth -like world was planet three. Then you go out to planet four. And planet four was uh, 210 Kelvin. Okay, that's minus 63 centigrade. But it'd probably be a bit warmer at the equator. Uh, one, 1.05 gravities, 1.78 atmospheres. Atmosphere, 85% nitrogen, 14% oxygen. So basically, if you crashed your ship on the equator, you'd probably just need a parker. You could get out of your ship without any any protection at all apart from parker <laughs> poke around your ship go yeah i'll fix that up yeah and that's not a terraformable world and i don't i just don't mm. understand the logic of that they're both silicate magma worlds i was gonna say like yeah. the composition maybe had something to do with it um but, uh... 66 percent rock 33 percent metal and the terraformable was 67 percent and 33 percent so i i think um, it it is a combination of distance to um, the parent star and, of course, what type of star it is. Um, there's like a distance range and then probably also some yeah. other parameters. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. Sometimes it's kind of weird. There is something yeah. else that we don't see in the stats. Now, it is very possible that maybe it didn't have an active core, right? Like the, the, the core, the planet is no longer active, so it's not generating a magnetic field to protect you from solar radiation. And if you don't have that, even if the atmosphere is right and the surface of the planet is right, you're just going to die from some type of horrible cancer <laughs> after a couple months Possibly. of living on there. Possibly. So yeah, breathe yeah. breathe the air, but you know, no I, no cosmic shield. I put that in the category shield. of of giving them an excuse when they don't deserve one, because in my books, <laughs> that should be a terraformable world. Uh, and I want a damn good reason to know why it isn't compared to one in the system which is like hell and is. You know, that, so, that would be another yeah. kind of cool feature that they could add into exploration is maybe have like some type of, um, you know, magnetometer to, to measure like the magnetic field or the magnetic strength or map the is, magnetic I mean, fields yeah, of planets. It's a very important one. Yeah, I mean, it, it has an atmosphere is the point. And if it has uh, an atmosphere of 1.78 and it's, what, 1600 something, 1800 light seconds out from the star, it's an F star, it was. Um, it's got enough wherewithal to keep an atmosphere running, so it's probably got some sort of magnetic field. Not necessarily. It was a Mars has an it atmosphere was... as well, and Mars is close enough to the star, uh, to, to, to the yeah, sun, Mars to have liquid water as well, like but the atmosphere is wrong. Point... And it doesn't have an active hours. core, so it doesn't generate a magnetic field the same way that Earth does. So if you yeah. spend time on Mars, yeah, you need some type of uh, some type of shielding from the cosmic radiation. Otherwise, you're but, dead. As I say, I ain't going to give him an excuse for that. Not that it's not that it's <laughs> really that difficult to create something. Uh, I mean, uh, apparently, just plain old water is a, a great absorber of cosmic rays. I think. So, I mean, um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Gray's, pro Gray's probably right. It, it's something to do... They've probably got a Goldilocks zone fixed in mm -hmm. Stellar Force yeah. uh, settings. 
Uh, and even if something like this happens, which is just outside of it and is technically a world you could land on and, and survive, okay. Um, because of where it is in, in terms of pure numbers, it says, nah, you can't. So and and then of course you there's... can't you can't expect them to have all the edge edge cases. Yeah. And... It, there's going to be well, a I, certain element I of RNG because... in there as well. So there is there is you yeah. know just because it's in the habitable zone and, and the conditions are right is not necessary. Doesn't stop me complaining though. No, Keep no, it. it's, it's definitely something to, that we could complain about. Should, should put them up on the forum and say, "Oi, maybe they'll fix it one day." <laughs> all in all, it's it's not a bad. Um, you know, not a bad creator that they've made in terms of how like the planets are generated. Oh, it's stuff, excellent! But... Absolutely excellent. There's only the old edge case, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. There, there's um, there's a few times where you kind of look at it and go, "Oh, is. Stellar Forge, you silly." Creature. And it is getting better. They, they they are fixing problems with it over time, even though sometimes they fix things that we think probably shouldn't, like Spatula's famous gas giant that was as brighter than a star. And it should have been because it had a temperature as bright as a star. That was crazy. Loved that one. But that's fixed now, unfortunately. I don't remember that. What was it? Like it was a, a gas giant that was giving yeah, off like it was, it was, um, radiation? A gas giant Light? With, with, a, with sun level temperatures on the surface. And it was insanely bright white. You wow. park next to it, look in your cockpit, you couldn't see anything. Everything was washed out. It was so white. That's hmm. really interesting. Um, yeah. But things like that are fixed now, unfortunately. Hmm. I mean, gas giants do give off a certain amount of heat radiation, obviously, but uh, light, no, they shouldn't. So, almost as bright as my skin tone, then. <laughs> almost. <laughs> or mine right now. I open the blinds <laughs> up sitting next to me, and I'm looking at my image. I've got, like, vampire on one side, and then, like, only half vampire on the other side. So damn pasty white I am. <laughs> it's like, you shine the light on me, and I glow. <laughs> hey, Echo Spark. Yeah. How's... So, um, yeah, do you want to have a look at the galaxy map and see where this world's current waypoint is relative to your I'll, position? I'll do a search on it um, after I map this last planet yeah, do. Right over here. Do, if you're being in mappy mode. Yeah, Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll just map this planet surface because I'm coming right up on it. My last terraformable, and uh, before I jump, we'll check out where Distant Worlds is. So Distant Worlds is, uh, are they on the way back right now? Is that it? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. still, still heading um, out. Well, there was quite a delay at uh, Sagittarius A because of the community goal and explorers anchorage and the mm. mining CG thing going on. So right. that took an extra week and a bit out. So yeah, it's um, waypoint nine now, and it's on the way. It, it, there's no more civilization between us and people point now so people who uh, who aren't that fond of being too far away from civilization are probably turning back now so I think, right about enough now fair enough you know you've got as far as that that's that's no shame in that okay let's uh got the galaxy map opening up here let's see where they are go ahead and give me the uh, system name it's um in in admin there oh, in admin yeah. So you can you can paste it in. Oh, if you, if you want to type it in by hand, that's what I was going to do. But you but, should, uh, should be able to, to con control C and control V it if you're lucky. Uh, oh if goodness. it's if it's behaving. Is it that hole? Oh, waypoint. Not, Never not, mind. Not I see. I see. I was just reading it. Freud. Freud. Yeah. Yep. Paste. Yeah. Let's see. We are. Oh, quite a ways. Looks like. Hmm. Oh yeah, sixteen thousand. Sixteen and a half thousand yeah. light years away. I'm actually closer to Quite the bubble now than I am to distant worlds, I think. Yay. Uh, let's see, am I? Oh, I'm almost equidistant. I'm 17.8 thousand light years from the bubble <laughs> and 16 and a half away from distant worlds. So almost home. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? been Amazing. a long time yeah i'm gonna just take these bookmarks off here bookmark off so I'm, I'm getting into the habit of deleting my bookmarks after i've used them because otherwise yeah. you just uh, I'm, I'm having to delete them uh, as i go at the moment if i want to add new ones because i reached the limit so i go back through my list and i go do i want that one no i don't think i want that one off because i can't add any more unless i delete an old one 
How many people in chat are on uh, Distant Worlds right now? Show of hands. Raise your hand if you are in Distant Worlds or on Distant Worlds or attending Distant Worlds or participating in Distant Worlds, whatever it is that you... However you oh, want to identify give, just your... Give it. A nod if you're actually flying in distant worlds right now and don't want to take the other hand off the controls. Yes, exactly. <laughs> just, just nod. Hit the keyboard. Mash the keyboard with your face. Bow. That too. <laughs> by, by the random combination of letters, we will discern that you are currently flying <laughs> in distant worlds. Yeah. <laughs> what have we got here? Is that a little star? That is a tiny little planet. Okay. Yeah, we've got quite a few world is Mash's com the Dr. Nagy says Mash's comms panel with face. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing? Uh I'm I'm doing this the old fashioned way. Wrong, wrong. Scan. <laughs> That's the old fashioned way. The old fashioned way is to go into the doing system wrong. after you honk. <laughs> uh what do we got here? Still looking for notable stellar phenomenon, still not ever finding them getting to the verge of giving up on exploration yeah uh, muddy funster says that he hasn't, hasn't got the time to it is a it is a thing i mean it's a lot of commitment is something like distant worlds because it is a huge distance i mean they, they've spaced it out so that it, it's pretty slow uh, but by modern modern jump range standards anyway mm. not like old jump range standards it would still be, be a hell of a lot longer to do uh, but even so it's a big commitment to do so um, you know, it's one of these things that if you want to do your own distant worlds thing, you'll have to you know, just do it at another time when you've got more time. Because, uh, you know, the stars are still there, the galaxy's still there, it's all waiting for you. Thank goodness. Um, could anywhere. you uh, could you kind of read off a list, like, uh, of who's in the chat that's on distant worlds? Who have we got there? Uh, Dante UK's there. Dr. Nagy's there, of course. Uh, Vancouver Crest, Commander Iman, uh, Johnson Sky, yes, he's out there, aren't you? Dead Star Amiga's there. Uh, Malabic. Uh, Darb's on his way. Darb's at waypoint 7. C catch up. Actually, you know, if you skip waypoint 8, you just go straight to 9. You can cut out that top length. No, don't worry. No one will notice. <laughs> so, because, uh, <laughs> Nobody uh, will quote. notice. Yeah. No one will notice. We won't uh, tell Johnson anyone. Sky. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's quite a few. Quite a few. Just make sure you don't have any friends so they don't see your blip on the galaxy map. <laughs> <laughs> go, in, go in a different PG. So uh, the the real question here would be how many of you folks who are on distant worlds uh, right now were on the original distant worlds? Let's let's see a show of hands and see how many people who are flying right now were on the original distant worlds. And how many were on the and, and if you were on the original distant worlds but not on distant worlds too? I'm kind of curious as well. Let us know in chat. And, and why? Why are you not on the new Distant Worlds? There's a lot of questions today. We want to know, what is your reason? So Scorb is playing uh, Star Citizen, huh? Will be. Will be later oh, will... tonight. Oh, that was today he was downloading it. I think us. it's tonight. Oh, no, we, we did it... Um, uh, what was it? Day before yesterday, I think. I think it was. It was it yesterday? New call, remember? My brain. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, yes, he's going to have a, a look at it tonight. A proper first look. Hmm. Um, assuming, of course, that the 3.5 download isn't another 10 gig. <laughs> yeah, could be one of those weird things, huh? It's an interesting looking system. What's the deal with this? Oh, okay. No rich body, haven't mapped it. 7.83 light seconds out. All right, so what's chat saying in terms oh. of... Oh, there you are, Gray. Muddy Funster Gray. says, you were, ab you were absent last broadcast, and it felt so cold and lonely with just... The oh. It's true. So, oh, nice to have you back. They long to have you on the show, Gray Test. And maybe next yeah. time you'll actually spell, spell my name correctly so I can actually see you mentioning in chat. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no he, he spelt it. He spelt it the right way, doesn't he? Because you are the greatest. Oh, yeah. the greatest! No, we, we just we just sat here for two hours going halonium <laughs> every five minutes. Over and over, because we were missing you. 
So what's chat saying about their uh, distant world attendance? Uh, not a lot yet. Not a lot. Come on, folks, speak up. Don't be shy. That's, yeah, that's Star Citizen on the Xbox, which I think the Xbox was released after First Distant Worlds. Yes, so that's the thing. So he couldn't be on that one. Oh, um, but yeah, um, it's it's curious actually. What I'm actually surprised about is how many people from Distant Worlds One are on Distant Worlds Two, because you think isn't one dose of that madness enough? But apparently not. But you know, deep space explorers I really are that mad, and then you'll go out again. Yeah. Not as mad as Oxy. Uh, for Oxy, of course, who's, who's perpetually flying out to Beagle Point with broken canopy ships. He, he really, he, you know, he crossed the space madness line a long, long time ago. No way back for him. <laughs> nope. He's, he's done for. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've crossed that space madness line, too. I'm just. Yeah, you've been out there that long. Yeah. Uh, well, long greatest time. and I aren't really here, you know. We're just voices in your head. You've just yeah. been out there too long. <laughs> there, there is no, there is no broadcast. There's no <laughs> so broadcast. No. Every Saturday, I just talk to myself and the voices in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Space madness. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I have no destination in mind right now. I mean, I'm slowly making my way back uh, to the bubble, as you can see Best here. Best way to do it. Two, two point something light years at a, at a time per jump. So, uh, yeah. someone do some math for me. What What is, uh, what's 17.8 thousand divided by 2.3? <laughs> gotta be like nine? It's, it's, it's more than uh, three, I think. Definitely. Eight, <laughs> eight, eight point something. That like eight thousand yeah. jumps to go. Um, hold on, five jumps, maybe six. I don't know. I just saw a question pop up on my comms panel. Oh, yeah. uh, Doctor Nagy says, "Question: Is there a broadcast episode where you talk about premonition after it got released, and perhaps you've read it? And if yes, which one?" Uh, oh good goodness! We, I'm pretty I sure we, we talked it about it, but I couldn't tell you which one that was. We talked about it, but I don't think it was after release. I think it was pre-release, wasn't it? Um, I think. Well, I think we talked about it after release because we weren't going to mention before release that we were in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we for couldn't sure. really. Because uh, yeah, Doctor Nagy was, he posted in chat earlier. He said he was reading Premonition yesterday and said Shabuki gets a call from you guys, and Greatest is described as having a strange accent from a certain place of old Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I I haven't read it. I, I I don't do that reading stuff. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> no, I, I would download the audiobook though. I think it's available in audiobook format, right? Um, do you know, I don't know actually. He, he I won't, feel like it was. It to be. I, I think I um, have looked on his website at one point be. and remember seeing a audiobook format. Ooh, we got Waterworlds. Sounds like a bad infection or something. Oh, you got Waterworlds. So sorry. All right. Um, where in the hell do you think these water worlds would be? Oh, did we do that, Spooky? Spooky says we mentioned it, but forgot to tell him and Sinclair that it was safe to unmute at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I vaguely remember that incident. Yeah, yeah. So they probably spent half the show not listening, waiting for us to say it's safe now. <laughs> it's safe now. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, that's like a singer assuming they're explorers of people. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I can't, I can't say for certain. It's a big galaxy. A lot of strange things out there. Who knows if, you, if the thing you're talking to is actually a person or not. You just don't know. Well, I've got a lot of... Jeez, got a lot of signals here. Let's get rid of these damn asteroid belts. 42. First, if you if you scan all of that, that'd be worth a pretty penny, even if they're just little rocky. Oh, they're garbage. So they're garbage signals, is what pebbles, they are. Pebbles, uh, pebbles or snowballs that are still. Yeah, they're still all snowballs. Top. Lots of snowballs. Because it's the same as um, well, it's the same as three quarters money terms of DSSing everything in the old days. So you know, it'd be a fair amount. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, even an ordinary system is worth a fair bit. It's I, a big one. I, I've been avoiding scanning all of these ice balls for a while now. I've just been, you know, doing like the uh, 
the surface skin on the terraformables and um, mm. metal rich. What is I'm, this one? I'm afraid that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment. Is that I'm just hopping from waypoint to waypoint. Oh, if is. I see something in the the expensive zone in the middle of the scanner, uh, I, I will I will scan it with the FSS, and then I'll depending on how far away it is, I'll go and map it. And if it's a small system that's got terraforming candidates and a couple of water wells, I mean, yes, I'll go and map all of the the money ones. But by and large, I have a habit of leaving everything else alone. This one has got half map systems. I know completionists hate that. They'll, they'll hate me for that. You can't half scan a system. What's the matter with you? Well, you can, and uh, yeah, I do. I frequently do. I'm normally, afraid. I don't frequently like do. doing it, but uh, it's just become more efficient not to scan the uh, the ice balls. I just don't oh, see that. Er Eric Eric Hendrickson says I should do the audio book for Premonition. <laughs> yeah, you should. That'd be awesome. I, I won't do it into Jana's voice, though. You're right. Uh, Scorp says, "Has Josh found any notable stealth phenomenon?" Nope. And then Eric, and then Eric, Eric <laughs> You're says, just teasing Josh, him. Eric says, Josh is a stellar phenomenon. So there you, go. <laughs> you don't need to find one. I'm a generation ship <laughs> with <laughs> light drive, light speed drive. Okay, come on, damn asteroids. Get the hell off my screen. There we go. Get those out of there. Now What's the matter, Scott? Don't more. you like to, Jenna? Don't you dare, Trajan. <laughs> You'll just run away, Gray. I wouldn't do that. You know you. it just it's, uh, upsets him, right? Yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, no, Scorb's just... Uh, just he, He's just worried because he owes to a general lot of void opals. <laughs> so. Oh, is that so? Mm -hmm. Okay, where is this... Oh, there it is. Waterworld. Okay, there we go. Two Waterworlds. Now I can stop scanning the rest of this because these are all just ICs. And a rocky, I see. But we got two water worlds in the system, so we will go and yeah, map those. Yeah, Darb is quite correct. Quite correct. You're only 5.5 Kylies from Polo Harbor. What if in the hell is that? Polo, Polo Harbor? Harbor is, yeah, it's a, a planetary uh, base on the Colonia path. The path from the bubble to Colonia. There's half a dozen stop off points, truck stops. There's a the way, half you know. a dozen of them? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, Eagle Landing, there is. Uh, Sakakawea Point, is it another one? There's there's quite a few anyway that they constructed uh, on a Colonia Highway. So between the bubble and Colonia, there's yeah, a good half dozen. And Polo Harbor is your nearest, uh, five point five Colonies. Well, uh, I don't know. I, what do you guys think? Should I stop? at a planetary base or should i just keep going and, and go home and well, sell you know i i do i do worry about that hull you know <laughs> no nah, he's gonna be fine well you know if you had a big i'm pretty sure at, at this point game has just recognized 39 percent as like a fixed value those are not changeable <laughs> anymore like he I can't so. repair it and he can't die anymore i do hope so but you know by the same token i i, I would like to see a, a a broadcast with the big sell i don't know how much i would actually make selling though. page after page well, the, the other point is, if you stopped off and sold all this stuff and then popped out again, everything you'd be making would be under the new new monies, so we wouldn't have to worry about, is some going to be worth a little, is some going to be worth a lot? Well, well, that's it. I mean, you have to keep in mind, like, two plus years of my data was pre-exploration chain, so I'm not going to get that exactly. much for all of that stuff. It's, it's not even going to be worth it, honestly, to sell all of that crap. At least I don't well, think it's going to be worth it. But, you know, the longer you don't sell it, the more likely it is some Muppet work from Nick Jill. All the shinies. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I know I've already lost my, uh, you know, first mapped on, or first discovered on quite a few of those. Uh, um, Keith's, Keith's probably right, actually, at this point. With, with the, the exploration rank you already have and the amount of data you've got, even on old money, if you sold it at Polo Harbor, you'd get elite, and you could get yeah. Russian writer, you know, even at old old prices. Then I could just jump back to the bubble lickety split and start upgrading my exploration ship to go out for another three years. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. You could end up with a jump range of um, what can you get out of an ASP sixty? Yeah, the jump range isn't that important. With, with to the me, Guardian, though. Guardian 
module as well. Well, I, okay, so yes, I guess the, the jump range would be important just for the fact that if I wanted to go to harder to reach places, but uh, I mean, I tend to stay within the bubble. I don't go all that far off the, the beaten path, you know? Uh, not the bubble, excuse me, like the, the main bulk of the galaxy. Mm. Yeah, Keith's also right there. If you, if you choose to pop into Polo to sell that data, don't go in open, just in case. Yeah. Do a lot of people hang out at those places? Yes. More than you'd think, unfortunately. But, uh, that's that's very interesting. interesting. And they are they pretty good at recognizing a explorer returning. Yeah. <laughs> they think it's amusing to kick people's sand castles over. That's that's very big and clever of them. Yeah. Do keep in so, mind yeah, this is a fully armed asp yeah. explorer, <laughs> but I don't think I would want to take on any PvP shit. And you could not yeah. stand a chance no. against someone who's dedicated. I, I'd get Fully armed, the new one. pre-engineering. Yeah, pre-engineering. That's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, it would be really nice to upgrade this to a different ship, though. Um, so it's, like, it's like that magic sword you get in the, in the newbie zone, and then you step out of the newbie zone into the next one, and the first thing you hit with it, it just annihilates you. I, I don't really want to do any advertising <laughs> here, but in the light of the most recent release on the Frontier store, I can actually recommend you taking the Courier out. If you do like your smaller, more nimble ships, the Courier is extremely fast and nimble, nah. and it, it's a, it's, it is a half-decent exploration ship. I want a bigger exploration ship. For things in that, that well, we just in don't that have case, in case, you probably go Great for Phantom. Great Python, yeah. Cobra, um, or you know the I, big ones, Anaconda. I've got the Mark II because it's got Fighter Bay and bits and bobs. But if for optimal crate exploration, you should really take the Phantom. It's, it can be pimped just that little bit further, distance-wise. The view. Yes, is... Darb says. Darb says, make sure you're in Starstone Enterprises squadron before cashing in the stuff. Of course. <laughs> Right. Yes, yes, we did all benefit from that, thank you. The, the, the view is not particularly exciting oh. from the crate ships, though. I, I will say, mm. I would miss this a lot, just being able to mm. look what? around. Oh, come on, tell me I got it. Spatula and Thudpack uh, Thud oh, recommend a Beluga, of course, because it's huge. Does it have it, a nice it's view? It's absolutely huge. It's two-thirds the size of the Titanic. Uh, but yeah, it's not a bad view from the cockpit. All the, the, uh, the luxury ships do have a nice big open canopy. That would be an interesting ship to take on an exploration. Not as not as open as a lake on, but it is um, one big sheet of glass, top to bottom. Hmm. So it's it's pretty. You know, I wouldn't uh, I, I wouldn't be opposed to taking out one of those uh, beluga liners or uh, like a dolphin or something like that. They they look kind of interesting. Well, what, is, what does chat think? Does chat think I should stop at that space station and sell data, or should should I go back to bubble? I want to hear what you guys think. This is like a choose-your-own-adventure kind of thing, but I don't choose the adventure you guys do. Choose Josh's adventure. Choose Josh's adventure. <laughs> if, if you want to see me make it all the way back to the bubble, I'm down for that. I have no problem doing it. If you want to see me go and sell, I could... Set a destination for some. You think we can fit that in one broadcast? Do you selling the data? I would imagine so. I mean, I can't imagine it's going to be that much data. I've I've only done maybe oh, what, six thousand systems, seven thousand. Do you? It's do you remember unanimous. the days when you couldn't sell a whole page? I do. <laughs> <laughs> only too well. Only too well. Yeah, um, chat's almost unanimous there. What is with it? The exception, with the exception of Commander Thunpucker saying, your ship, your rules, everyone's saying, sell, sell, sell. Really? Sell. They want to sell stream, sell. Yeah. They want to sell stream, huh? Um, okay. Well, if that's what you guys want, I can uh, set a different destination, kind of see where I'm at, and see how long it'll take me to get there. What do we got here? Wow, look at this thing. It's spinning like crazy. Um, what's the uh, what's the name of the system? Um, I don't know if you'll be able to type, find it by just typing Polo Harbor in, but I'll just find the, the system name anyway, just, uh, just to get it for you. And I'll paste it in the thingy. I mean, it would be kind of cool to have Elite next to my exploration title. 
Mm. I am, I'm totally yeah. down for that. Uh, there, if memory slips, typing this, looking at uh, EDD thingy. I think this is the one you want there. Put it in, in admin. If you paste that in, you'll see where you are. Yeah, let me uh, finish scanning this system here real quick. We'll take a look. See how um, far the other away thing, I actually am. of course, is that for some some systems out here, we notice this on distant worlds, and it's something we, uh, we 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 got used to trying to dodge. For some reason, the NPCs were just randomly attacking ships for no reason. Uh, we, I don't think we ever worked out what it was they were doing, what what antagonized them, but they'd just pick on some player ships for no reason at all. Uh, and it might still be the case that they'll do that, so it would be, you know, you have to be careful, keeping an eye out for that too. Hmm. Yeah. Probably all right. That's usually something I like to avoid is getting blown up by PCs or NPCs. Uh, let's get uh, this one. Got two terraforming candidates there. While I fly out there, let's take a look at what that was. Okay, bounced. Yeah, I don't think I, I think um, you're right for cargo, aren't you? I don't think you've got any. Cargo? Uh, I don't think they count uh, limpets and I have escape no pods cargo. as cargo these days. So I've got you're a fine. There you go. Bunch of uh, stuff and things that I've picked up on planet yeah, services. You're fine. Yeah, you'll be right with no cargo. No data. No cargo. Yes, yeah, so our image says you might have visited the system where Raxler is located and not even noticed. It, it'll, <laughs> Imagine it'll be that. like um, <laughs> it'll be like in Vegas, you know. Wait, wait, you're the one that puts the, the quarter into the the million dollar slot machine, and it, and it just goes off all bells and whistles. So you turn in that data system, and it'll all be woo. You found Raxler. I <laughs> highly doubt it. Maybe I highly yeah, doubt it. I, I didn't go anywhere in the direction of you know where people believe Raxla is supposed to be, which is, I think. You know, backwards from where I would have uh, head on, had set off, but um, well, you never know. Maybe Rax is not where people think it is. That would be pretty cool, though. Gotta say. Yeah. So, how long does it typically take to sell a page of data if you have like first discoveries and um, first maps now? Not very long at all. Uh, it's. 20 30 seconds i think is it because you click something that's is it 50 a page it sells uh and yeah, then it sticks for a page. few seconds and then just splashes up your first discoveries quickly at you with a, a total well that though. takes longest time probably because it actually like, long, like lists you, them yeah. and you, you have to wait until it's done listing them i think you can skip uh, the the bonus page if you want okay I think, yeah I, I never do i never do because i like to see what they've got but i think you can you just have to look out for Rexler in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's sharp and green or something. Is that what you have to? You actually have to look at it <laughs> and see if it no, pops up. it wouldn't show up as Rexler. Rexler is probably not the name of the system, or it's certainly not the name of the system because then we could just search for it. Right. Yes, <laughs> Scorb's right. He, he says people have searched where they believe it to be, and that suggests it's where they don't believe it to be. Well, you see, if you don't believe it exists at all, you're most likely to find it, aren't you? In that regard, no, I don't believe Raxler exists. Next system you jump into, Raxler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see how far are we actually from this place? Yeah, five point six k. Yeah, Kisa's um, Polo is currently in a pirate attack state. I think that's because it's um, if you have an investment system. Uh, that's where you get top dollar for selling void opals and things. So, understandably, they become pirate magnets. So, pirates will try and interdict ships uh, if you've got cargo. Uh, they generally don't if you haven't, unless you just get the idiots that say, I've found my next target and it's you, Commander. And they just interdict people for no reason, but you can evade them. It's not a problem. So, this is the closest one to me then, 5.6k. I believe so. Yep, that's what Darb says from where you are. It probably is. If, if you imagine like the straight line from the bubble to Colonia, it's on that line. All of yeah, those, um, that's why it's a little off for me. Truck stops, truck stops. So, yeah. Hmm, 
All right, well, uh, I'll reset my destination for a thousand light years towards that direction and uh, start making my way over there. Why the hell not, right? Indeed, yeah. Um, so how far, it, how far is that? I'll check how far that is out from thingy. From thingy? From thingy? How far is it from the thingy? Yeah, from, from Sol. Well, I'd say it's probably just a little bit closer than where I am right now because it's kind of off on a, an angle to me here. Pretty decent angle. Okay, so let's reroute. Guess we'll have a selling stream sometime in the near future. Mm -hmm. The not too distant future. Now, what is going to be the easiest way to route this, though? Because it is past the uh, the routable point, right? Surface scan complete. Mm -hmm. You can route up to ten thousand light years. You can. Yes. Yeah. Plot route unavailable. Maximum distance exceeded. You're on ex you're still on economical. You're on economical. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Might answer that. Classic. Oh, of course. That, that's asking too too much of the thing's brain. Yeah. I yeah. think in economic it's a thousand light years max. If even, I don't know. So I have to do this on non economical? What kind or of... tw 20,000? Okay. What fair enough. What kind of exploration is yes. this? It's uh, it's twenty. Let, let's crazy. see how many jumps is that. It's one hundred and ninety-two jumps on fastest route, and that's not even using the neutron stars. Let's see how long it takes with the neutron star boost. I'm kind of curious now. Um, yeah, depending on where you are, there should be a few here and there. Okay. I don't actually know how far Polo Harbor is off Sol, off the bubble, but I bet I could jump out there on an alt account and give you give you protection if you needed. <laughs> Let's go. Plotting route. It is 134 jumps. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't be able to do it on this stream, but uh, I, 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 I. No, cer certainly not. Even if you were just uh, jonking, which is not going to happen. No, that's you can stop and look at things happen. as you should. I don't know if I want to do it in on uh, fastest though. I I mean, kind of feel like I'd lose out on a lot. Uh, um, maybe. Well, turn the neutrons off anyway. You don't need that. Yeah, no, I definitely don't need the neutrons on. You just have to repair stuff afterwards. It's not worth it. So how does that work? If I put it on economical, will that recalculate? No. It doesn't. Not, uh, the whole distance. I think Gray's right. It'll only do economical to a thousand because it's so many systems. Yeah, well, that's so okay because I can be. kind of come over here, I guess, and at least see the route that I'll be taking and plan an economical trip over there. I think just just out so of curiosity, five. I'll I'll um log into mine and see how far away it is and how far it would take. I don't have a a majorly exploration ship on that account, but I can have a look. 975 and 1001. So right about there. All right. Well, let's plot the first leg on economical. Okay, first thousand towards selling, plotted, 425 jumps. <laughs> Yay! I didn't say it was going to be this stream or next. <laughs> but soon, TM. Soon. <laughs> We're on our way there, okay? It's definitely closer than... I mean, look, it's definitely closer than the bubble. So we'll get there much, much sooner than if I were to get to the bubble. I have half a mind to do it on fastest jumps, but 
I just don't like the idea of, of fast jumping. That's not real exploration. That's that's speeding too. So I'm I'm trying to find the 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 compromise here. If they want me to sell, I'll sell, but I have to kind of make my way over there the way that I explore, right? I think that's fair. Fuel scooping complete. It's your way. That's right. It's and and we're compromising. Hey, I got an earth like here. Sweet. Where is it? Right there. Nice. I'll take it. Asteroid clusters, high metal content. That could mean there may be some terraformables here too. Uh, let's get these asteroid clusters out of the way. There's one. Um, okay. Well, you know what? It's nice to have kind of a, a different goal than the bubble. And um, can you buy like some of most of the exploration ships in Colonia? Because maybe what I'll do is I'll just go to Colonia after that. I don't even have to go back. Oh, I do have to go back to the uh, bubble for the engineering. Most of it, I, I don't know. I think Scorp's got uh, a lot of experience looking at the, these systems around Colonia, the ones that have a bit of tech in them. What would I be able to engineer if I just went to uh, Colonia? Would I be able to... Jump range, yes, I think. Jump range? Probably nothing, because you have to unlock the Colonia engineers in the bubble. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> make a lot uh, of sense. Uh, but there oh, you go. I forgot about that. Well, yeah. So. Hmm. So, so much for that plan. So poop. <laughs> Poop on a stick. That's what that is. That's disappointing, though. Go to Bubble to unlock Colonia Engineers. Makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, hang on just one sec here, gents. Sorry. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Uh, I will be... Right back. No, no, she's okay. Sorry, my bird just decided to uh, drop quick down break. from her little perch. <laughs> they do that. So they do that, don't they? Make sure she didn't hurt herself, that's all. She has her uh, her flight feathers clipped, so she can't really fly very well. But she's, I mean, she's pretty good at, you know, just getting to the ground without hurting herself. But, uh, oh, yeah, we got a terraforming candidate here, too. Any others? Nope. Okay, let's go to that one first. Um, I just wanted to make sure she didn't land on the heater because uh, she likes to climb up on my curtains. That's where she hangs out. She goes right to the top of the curtains and hangs out at the top, so she gets like a nice overview of everything going on in the house. And, <laughs> uh, and once in a while, while she's kind of like in the folds of the curtains, she'll fall and <laughs> she can't really fly in there. So <laughs> just gotta make sure she's okay. And she seems just fine because she's crawled right back up to the top. I don't know if she's <laughs> a bird or a monkey, honestly. She, <laughs> she just loves climbing the curtains like up and down and in the in the folds and out of the folds she's uh, she has a blast up there she's a monkey bird yeah <laughs> like they right do. out they, of they, uh, they, wizard they of oz they use their beak to climb don't they oh yeah i just got yeah. super sharp talons her talons are really sharp She can fly. I mean, I just don't think she's ever learned to fly because she had her flight feathers clipped when she was young. So she, she hasn't quite figured out how the, the mechanics of it work, which is kind of funny. Where 
Or should I put this one up there? I feel like I may have missed this scan by the one percent. Let's see what happens. Oh, 89%, sir. I think it's gonna be Let's find out. Survey says. Oh I got it. Alright. Alright, let's go get this earth like. Oh, the ship's kitted out to fight Thargoids, that's unusual. Let's have a look. What ship is that? Uh, one of Volshak's. It's a crate of some kind. Let's see, how far away is that from me? Uh, 17k! Hey! How long? <laughs> how many jumps is that for me in this ship? 17k? Yeah, 17k. It's going to be a lot. A lot, a lot of jumps in this ship. I need to get a better ship. Right. I like the fact that I'm going to uh, uh, in in the direction of of Colonia, I suppose, just because mm. at least I can see a nebula on the way, even if I do have to go back to back to the bubble after. Colonia is the route that I wanted to take originally, and then I said, "Nope, I'm going to go the other way." But there was no Colonia at the time. So now I got stuck on the boring side of the galaxy. It's a learned lesson, folks. If you like Nebula and you like checking out the cool stuff that are in them, don't go the hmm. opposite side of the core. 645 jumps. Hmm. Don't go where the Hawkins go. Yeah, Need don't don't ship. take the Hawkins route. Need a different ship. 645 jumps. <laughs> okay. Boop. 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 Next. Moving along. Who knows, maybe I'll even find a notable stellar phenomenon along the way. Maybe, maybe this is the way I have to go for it, you know? <laughs> the stellar forge seems to have uh, put everything on the other side of the galaxy from where I am, so... Yeah. That'll be the trick, right? So, uh, maybe... Maybe if 3.5 launches on Star, Star Citizen, I might possibly check that out. I'm curious I if... I think so. I'm curious if people would want to see a stream on that, though. Does anyone want to see a well, Star absolutely. Citizen stream? Um, yeah, chat, come on, chat. Would you would you like to see a bit of Star Citizen thing going on? I mean, it's been Scorb's quest recently to have a look at um, all Space Legs games to see how Space when, Legs. When is he starting it. tonight? Is he already going? Don't know. Um, not yet. Is Scorb going to be live streaming? Scorb, are you going to yeah. be live I streaming it? I think he, he yeah. that was his plan. I think unless 3.5 is dropping like right now and he has to download that yep. as well. <laughs> no, he's he's uh, going to do it in uh, a few minutes, a few minutes time. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so we'll we'll go and annoy him halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> Finish. Welcome back. So go watch that time. after the show. That's right. After, <laughs> after the broadcast, the show, Orb yeah. will be streaming it. Cool. We'll come and annoy you later. Gives me something to do after the show. I've been, um, I was telling Turgeon earlier, I've been messing around in Kerbal for a, a little while here. The past few days I've been jumping on and building some spaceship, Le Lego spaceships. Oh, oh, so much fun. I have to play that as again as well. I downloaded... Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, uh, Mel, Mel Brand was, will do FSDs, yeah. But I mean, the thing about uh, Josh is that he set off before Engineers existed. 
So he has no engineering contacts apart from the publicly available ones. I've, the I've got so, nothing, man. This is so like I, I literally am going to be playing the game like a newbie when I get back to the to the bubble. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, cool. It's kind of cool. I get yeah, new ship who is? That's nice. Or rather, new game who? Who is? Yeah. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's definitely definitely a thing. Uh, you'll you'll have an awful lot to see. I mean, you've seen it on your alt account a bit. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Much has changed in the old town since you left, sir. <laughs> I guess so. Look at these planets. They're they're all lit up uh, really bright white. It's cool because of the uh, the star color here. Mm. Loving it. Maybe I'll take a look at I mean, this. Like th that is, is something that I've, I've noticed a lot on Distant Worlds because, you, well, I mean, you, you've seen yourself where you are there. When you get near to the, the, the center of the core, uh, everything used to be this same uh, pale coffee colored, you know, coffee with milk in colored. But now it's star class dependent. When you jump into a system, the, the, the ship's own cockpit filters, the canopy filters cut in. And it, it colors everything in different colors. So you get some lovely combinations of colors, some lovely greens and purples and things as well. It's not as, as monochrome as it used to be. Let's see what we got here. Nope. No terraformables. Looks like there's a lot of planets in there, though. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Nothing special on the rings there, though. Okay, moving right along. So what's chat saying? Do they want to see a Star Citizen Star Citizen stream? Yes, why not? Yep, yeah. Okay. Yep. I guess. Legs. Yes, go for it. Yeah. It's a thing. At least I know it's about 13 gigabytes download, right? That was the patch. <laughs> and, oh, that's just the patch. Can you can you yep. set up a, a HOTUS with uh, Star Citizen though? Does, um, it, does it work? I don't. I don't know. Everyone I've seen streaming it is talking about the key con controls for it. You know, this key, that key, 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 key this kind of thing. But uh, yeah, Darb says you can. Yeah, you can. Because it would be yeah. it would be kind of silly if you couldn't these days. Really. Yeah, but I'm guessing you still need keyboard and mouse for like the the space legs movement right um yeah it'll probably be the standard wasty setup yeah with, that's, um, that's what i'm guessing control at least. space for crouching and jumping you know th th these things are like um th it's the you just can't not do them because everybody's been used to them for 20 years 25 years well yeah now, actually i want these rocky bodies. That's all I want. But they're not going to give me rocky bodies, are you? Well, maybe. Nope. This is probably around the gas giants, wherever the hell they are. So screw that. All right, whatever. Jumping right along. Uh, you know, I've been super curious of uh, Star Citizen. I, I've only watched videos on it, and I mean, it it looks like there's so much potential for it, but when did they start developing? 2012 they started? Um, it was, the Kickstarter was the same time as Elites. Uh, yeah. I don't know how long it had been in, in pre-development before then. I, I know uh, Frontier had a semi-working engine for, for Elite based on the cover engine. When, when they started, when they launched the Kickstarter, it had been a, a, a back burner project. They'd been tipping away at for quite a while. I'm pretty sure it was 2012. Um, and that, that's I a really long, yeah. long time to still be in Alpha, you know? It is. That's it a... is. There's, there's not many out there have, have been in Alpha that long. Guy, <laughs> games have been born and died again in that time. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's it. Yeah. Like, th that's the only reason I'm hesitant to spend forty five bucks on it. Uh, okay, so 
who knows what exactly state it's in right now in terms of playability uh, if I were to invest 45 bucks and check it out. Is it a game that I can play and enjoy? Is there, what, what type of things can you do in Star Citizen? I know that they have some kind of mining. I, I know, uh, yeah, quite a lot of us in chat have, well, I haven't, but quite a lot of chat do have access. So, yeah, what do you reckon, chat? Tell us, what is the current state of Star Citizen? Is it, a, is it a, in a playable state oh, look where at you that. can enjoy look it? Look at that, Josh. What's there that? you are. Scorp is, is going to delay stream for an hour just for you. So oh, Scorp, you shouldn't cast. have. You can just jump straight from the broadcast onto the stream and see it first first time, first experience, vicariously through Scorp's eyes. Absolutely. There you go. Thank you, Scorp. Have you found any other games that you're going to do a first impression of, Scorps? Because what, what have we, what's he done so far? Um, Hellion? He's done No, no Man's Sky, very, Hellion. Very impressive now compared to when we last played on the broadcast. Oh, Hellion. It's very impressive now. Yeah, they've oh, changed quite Hell a bit again. Oh, Hellion. Yeah, yeah. They added in, uh, <laughs> um, what did they add uh, in? Yeah, No Man's uh, Sky. Radiation like said, now. Uh, X4 also had a look at. So all these things that have the sort of legs aspect and how, how they're implemented or not. Because, you know, we're thinking to the future. Um, like we say with the 2020 announcement, we don't know what it's going to be. We said, tell us. Don't know why they don't. But uh, it's going to be atmospherics or space legs. So you work on the premise that it could be either. Maybe they don't know. So uh, it, it's something that you can discuss and have a look at in other games and compare to see how well it's done in other games because as we've all agreed the last thing we want to see is elite introduce space legs badly oh, God. and do an x3 X rebirth on us we don't Please. want that Please, so if they're gonna no. do it mm. take your time do it properly so we, we'll wait we'll wait for that that's it uh, we don't mind waiting as long as they don't mess it up yeah space engineers nukes quite right space engineers too we should school should be doing that one because that's space legs too course yeah it is um we also mentioned osiris but osiris is kind of like land legs really osiris <laughs> is again in in a very early state though like it is it's a tiny company tiny company it's it's almost not really that enjoyable in in the state that it's in currently yeah yeah scorb's bang right there he said x4 is what it looks like when you rush a bucket of features lovely game but needs polish absolutely mm. Okay, well, we have a terraformable water world. Perfect. Oh, nice. <clears throat> kind of interesting to see, you know, um, uh, watching Egosoft trying to do the X games, because the first three and a half games, let's say, because they had some spin-offs of X3 there, like Terran Conflict and Reunion and whatever. Um, what they've been doing in that, like, phase of the game, they've just revamped it they they stuck to the same core gameplay mechanics they added new features in terms of ui in terms of you know handling in the game in terms of ships races whatever you know they yeah. just they just updated it to keep it you know in time but from then on with x4 x rebirth uh, and now what's yeah x4 and x rebirth basically they've tried new stuff they've tried new from the ground up different gameplay new new gameplay features and they've been struggling to make that work really it's too bad but i mean they were pretty revolutionary when they first launched their x series of games because which is why it worked for so long to just refresh it and you know because it was still kind of state of the art um even with x3 reunion and turn conflict yeah and, and i mean graphics wise it was phenomenal um no I, I don't recall any space games at the time that looked quite as nice as uh, the x series um and just the 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 amount of choice you had in terms of what you could do and how big of an empire and and everything that you could build like space stations and everything was just really really cool but um yeah which which is the one that uh, is it is it the new one that has vr support or, um, or was that like a a, a re-release of one of their older games because i know that one yeah, of the x I games had was, uh, vr support i think it was rebirth oh, that they did knows. the vr <laughs> score got it yeah it was rebirth yeah i think uh it, it wasn't it wasn't x4 straight away 
uh, and they, I don't just have, as far as I don't know why it's not designed for it. They, they said it would, they'd have to redesign everything. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was reversed. Um, it's, it's a curious thing with these things, it, it, where it's always a case of, uh, if you have a game that has VR added on later, you think, is it ever going to be as well done as something that, that's had VR planned from the beginning? Like uh, like Elite had, it, that was a given from the start that they were always going to put that in. Because um, some things do always feel like they've just literally oh. just been strapped on, and you think, well, that's not working. Yeah. Luke, technically nothing's stopping Scorps from joining us. I guess he's busy setting up his own stream with by my guess. Also, John well, Sugar says my theory is they are rewriting the game and I don't believe two years for space legs or planetary landings is necessary. I'm from a deaf background and it just doesn't feel like it's a feature thing. Which would make sense I, if you consider that the Cobra engine is a very, very old engine at this point that they've been reusing over and over. It's that it served us very well so far, but maybe it does have its limits. That they are hitting now and they actually have to rewrite it to you know make these new features work potentially which would make sense well they, they've always said that they they designed it as a modular system very clever so you know they they, they could keep uh, removing bits and adding new bits as they can. yeah fair but probably these bits that they now need for the planetary tech are probably much more complicated than mm. what they've added well, so far mm. jurassic world you know yeah. 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 Look at that. Yeah, but that's, that's a, again, that's a whole different because you have a, a very limited Same map image. that you have to render, that you have to, you know, display. Um, if you're working on a planetary scale, that's a whole different beast. So it is. I don't know. It would be it would be yeah. awesome to get some insight into this. I would love uh, one or more one another one of these technical streams that they've been doing um, about you know the game engine and what it can do, what it can't do, what they're working on there right now. Yeah, but there's like a serious lack of communication from Frontier at this point in time, and yeah. I, I, I don't I know. I don't know what the reason is that they don't want to tell us. I mean, if it's that far away, why not just tell people what they're working on? You know, like I mean, lo like prime example, <laughs> look at Star Citizen. It it works as long as you talk to people and you show them what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have nearly zero progress and you will still exactly. keep the, the guys, the people, and the players it's, somewhat it's entertained at least, or it's, informed. It, yeah, it, it's a question I, I do, people do ask me a lot. They say, well, you know, when we just talk about this thing in chat, they say, well, why, why are they not telling us what the content's going to be? And I say, I don't know. Why do yeah. you have to ask them? When, when I said this to someone that played Elder Scrolls, you know, I said, oh, yeah, it, it's got great new content coming up in 2020. But they, they're not telling us what it is. They said, what? You know, because I mean, a game like Elder Scrolls, it's, if, if they're putting something out, if they're announcing a new update, they tell you what it's going to be because they want you to get interested in it. Usually. You know, months and months in advance. the way that it works, it's right? exactly what we're going to be giving you. So for someone that's like a, a committed ESO player, saying saying, yeah, we've been told we're getting an update, but they haven't told us remotely what it is. They, they, they just they can't believe it <laughs> they don't understand how a company can say they're going to give you an update and then not even tell you remotely what it is it just doesn't make any sense to a lot of uh, a lot of players like that i have to agree with them and i can't defend it i wish i could <laughs> yeah. i had a reason yeah, if, if frontier told it. me why they're not telling us what it is that we're going to get that, and i could go oh thank god then i can Holy tell me moly but as it is I, ju I just have to shrug and say i don't know i don't yeah. know Check this jump in right over here. Got a, a Ooh, binary system, saw that. but like these two Ooh, right nice. beside each other. And then there's a third don't one right it. over there. D don't do it. I know you want to. I know uh, you want to fly between those stars. Why? Why do I want to, though? Like, I, I don't even understand. Why do I want to fly between them? Just... <laughs> why, why would anyone do that? No. Oh, it's, it's not a trinary. It's a quadrinary? Look at that. I think, Josh, the purpose is oh, yeah. to then go into external camera and look at you going in between two stars. Holy right? Holy. Actually, it's way more than that. <laughs> 40%. Oh, nice. You've got Hold a proper on. traffic light system there, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Let me uh, take a look at this in aura review. How is that, how is that worked out? Okay, so what have we got? We've got two here orbiting with two more orbiting, and then those ones are way, way off over there. Okay, it's just another 
that's just the binary yeah. there orbiting each other. Scores mentioned his, his, his favorite his favorite RB horse there about uh, VR and implementing it uh, in the game and what an overhaul it would require. As any of us who've tried to film footage in a station knows, uh, if you've got a ship parked in a station and you're trying to get a stable bit of footage of uh, the, the docking bay, the landing pad, all that kind of thing, it, especially if you want to go into iClone later and have a character walking across it, like some of us do, uh, if you get up close, you get up close to the uh, <laughs> binary. You get up close to the ground, and it's wobbling. It's wobbling. It's always wobbling. The landing pad floor is wobbling, and you think, "Well, I can't use that footage up close." And that's Scorbus' favourite complaint about floating point variables in the calculations. And it's just it's, you'd have to recode the entire thing to eliminate things like that if you're going to expect people to actually walk around on it in VR with space legs mm -hmm. because you can't have people walking on a surface that's bouncing no. that's people are going to be sick basically you don't want that so the, there is you know base coding like that that has to be redone it's not a simple task at all you know once upon a time I would have been terrified jumping in on a system like that with binary so close <laughs> But uh, I, I can't yeah. tell you how many countless times that's happened now, and it's just kind of like, meh, whatever. <laughs> they, they have, they have, thankfully, mostly, and it's not a hundred percent, but they have mostly uh, changed it so that you're not going to jump in in a star. Now, if it's a binary, it tends to put you at a, a greater distance. That one was pretty close from the primary start. That was pretty close. Like I say, some, even now, sometimes it'll it'll jump you in. Too close, dangerously close, yeah. heaty, heaty close. Very <laughs> rare, though. Very rare. I say I, I went out to Distant Worlds on the original one without any heat sinks. I didn't bother taking any heat sinks, and I never needed any at all, anyway. So I never got into a situation where I got cooked at the start. I'm just jumping in like that. I haven't taken any on Distant Worlds too either, and again, I haven't run into any problems. But that's not to say that there aren't problems. There are. Out there well. Just to we all know that I don't have heat sinks on this because I think I... Okay, so here's a, here's an admission. It wasn't that I wanted chaff on me necessarily. I think it's just that I mistook chaff for heat sinks <laughs> because I was <laughs> such a newbie player when I set off. I'm like, isn't okay. chaff was, what yep. you need? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> it was a young game. I say it's pre-engineers very, yeah. very long time ago. So we were and all young back then. I think I did also kind of want some for the weapon systems, but yeah, that was just, mm. just a big old bone move on my part. Mm. And once I set off, it was just too late. There was no turning yeah, back. There was, there was no turning back then. If you got outside the bubble, that was it. There was nothing. That's it. Nothing left. Um, what else we got in here? Is there something else? Yes, there is. Yeah, HMC's Rocky always body. worth a few bob. So, you know. Where's this last high metal content? Is it this one? Uh, don't think it's behind the star. There you go. No. It's, it must be behind the star. Oh, well. Yeah. What can you do? Forget it then. Yeah. yeah forget about it. Go back here and check these out. What do we got? Ooh, terraforming candidate. Yes. Ooh, another terraforming candidate. And another one. Ooh, this is a rich system. Ooh, yes. Yes. <laughs> are, they, are, they, are they all? We've got four terraforming candidates in this system. Two of them are orbiting that's, each other, so that's nice. Yeah, that system is worth a lot. They're all relatively close as well. Well, this system yeah. will be worth like six or seven million. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it will be. Maybe more. Terraforming candidates are one point something. But then you have like this discovery and the first discovery yeah, yeah, and then the mapping and then the efficiencies and... Some, some secret stats that they, that they put in about uh, gravity and uh, surface stuff. It does vary a little, but yeah, you're talking millions for that system. Yep, love it. And it looks like they're That's all good, lined up too. When, because... you, when you set out, sir, the uh, the most lucrative system that you would encounter would be Sagittarius A at about sixty six hundred thousand <laughs> credits. Pretty much. That would have been. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
nothing was worth more than Sagittarius A, 600,000 credits. And I did and get there. Now you've got a system like that is several million on its own, and it's just a standard system. And that's good. That's how it should be. Okay, so let's do both of these. Since they're right here. Okay, how many probes? We got six, perfect. Just what I like to see. Too far, too far for probe deployment. Really? Let's try that again. One, two, three. Yeah, we're, we're having we're having debates about space legs and chat here. What's the debate? Is Fill me in. Well, the debate is is just how much they would add to the, or could add to the game um, on their own and with certain levels of things to do and content that you can do with them. Uh, so what, no offense, no offense to Frontier, but they're not probably the the best placed company to add the kind of content that goes with Space Legs. I'd say it's not really their their field as a, as a bunch of developers now I, I think what you can do a lot of us would be happy to just be able to walk around look around inside our own ships because we've been flying these things for five years and we don't know what they look like beyond the cockpit you know you're locked off for the rest of your ship you want to know what's there what else in there so that would be a thing I d how uh, how quickly would it get old I don't know but um, that 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 is definitely a thing uh, Scorp found that in in x4 you can pop outside your ship with a repair gun and actually just start tinkering with the outside of your ship as an EVA. Drop outside of the jetpack poker. And of course you do that in Hellion all the time. That would definitely be a thing. And it would certainly, especially in VR, reinforce to you the scale of these ships, just how big they are as you clamber mm. outside a, a T9 on these little handholds outside in Zero G. Um, so that would be a thing, definitely. There's a lot of content in that. But when it comes to walking around stations, we, we're all kind of pretty much agreed uh, it would take you 20 minutes to, to walk anywhere in the station. It, it's like walking to you, 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 the next town over anywhere in the station. Yeah. You'd have to have taxi, taxis and God knows what vehicles and things. In which case, which, you're not, you're with not that using same problem legs. our citizen also encountered, and they actually <laughs> yeah. implemented a train system on their planet side locations. I think that's mm. something that you can actually do in 3.5 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Probably, yeah. Yeah. But say so that that's the thing. Now, what I personally would do is I would have um, space legs as as a uh, if you have a space bar or a space club that's for pilots federation members in stations where you can go and meet in there, and you get there with the taxi or whatever those little scale electric cars that goes around at the inside stations, you know the ones. And then you don't have to sort of walk everywhere, but you have a social hub with other people, other players in there who are also standing and using their space legs and doing stupid emotes and waving at each other like people always do when they have avatars in games. And that's as it should be, because people enjoy that. Well, you know uh, what else people that, enjoy? That, that and and that it's, would never get old. And it's that shocking that old. nobody in these future, future situations in like sci-fi games has actually decided to implement. Hasn't anyone watched Star Trek? God damn it. Freaking teleporters, man! Where's the teleporters? <laughs> We're already working on teleportation yeah. technology, and this is the year 2019. Actually, you know, now that you mention it, there's nothing to stop you from having a telepresence terminal at the landing pad that you walk to, a dozen steps maybe, to get to the telepresence terminal, and then telepresence to somewhere else in the station where you can actually walk around as a as a hollow character. But no, you're walking I don't want to walk around as a hollow like, character. I I, I want to actually. I mean, unless I'm I'm walking around in like some giant mech robot that you have to rent out. <laughs> that would be kind <laughs> of cool. I, I'm totally down for a cool. VR controlled mech robot. But uh, other you know than those, that, those shiny shiny silver statues that you get in tourist stations. Take one of those over and start waving your arms about smash buildings. <laughs> Rah. <laughs> yeah, Money Funds is right. It should whatever they do, walking should be optional. It, it shouldn't be something that you have to do because it would. It, there's no doubt in a space station it would slow things down. Absolutely. No so, doubt. in what setting 
in Elite Dangerous would you guys like to see Space Legs? What would be the main activity you would want to do with Space Legs well, in Elite? I've, I've, already, I've already done it in my episodes. I, I made a big point of it on the Guardian Ruins. I would like to be able to get out of my SRV, go and pick up a piece of Guardian technology and plug it into something in a Guardian Ruin. You know, find a socket on a Guardian Ruin and plug something in by hand. Do it yourself by hand space legs in space ruins rather than just shooting pylons, which which isn't you know, it's not much of an interaction. Mm. Things like that. Things actually on a planet surface, walking around and looking for things. Maybe uh, you could have caves that have particularly rare minerals in that you can't get your SRV into. So you have to climb down in there and get something by hand, pokey poke, grab, little shooty gun. Things like that. Things that would uh, be localized, but would, would take advantage of that form of locomotion. Because, I mean, you can't really use your ship without help to shoot um, <clears throat> uh, mineral, mineral nodes on planets and scoop them up. You can, but it's not easy. Uh, so that's what you use your SRVs for. So I don't see any difference between that and having one step further where your SRV will only take you so far and then you've actually got to climb into somewhere and get a very rare mineral. Gray? Yes? What, what do you think uh, space legs would be good for? What would you want to do with space legs? Uh, to be honest, I still don't see really see a place for it in, as in Elite Dangerous but if it were to be implemented I think the whole aspect of, you know, going EVA and maybe having to do some emergency fixes after a fight where you took some critical damage maybe and you only have a limited time to fix it, you don't have time to go back to a station, for example. Or, I don't know, yeah, boarding a ship, for example. That, that kind of stuff with combat would actually be really cool. Um, I, I do see your point, Turgeon. I, of course, I would love some additional features for SREs as well. I just don't see that much interesting gameplay down there on the surface yet until we have, you know, more interesting planets. So here is exactly. here is one place where Space Legs and would be good, can... and Star Citizen has implemented it already, which is where, and this works on the surface and in space, is where you find derelict ships and you could actually go in mm, and... Exactly, that would be amazing. Scavenging on the planet's surface, wreckage, oh yes, please, yeah. give me. So going into the ship... Yeah. Uh, retrieving yes. the data, finding out what it was that caused that particular ship yes. to be destroyed. Yes. Um, you know, maybe in, even in space or on a planet. Yeah, both yeah. would be good. Both would but be I, good. But I think we're kind of we're kind of circling around a point here that uh, it would make sense from a content perspective to have atmospheric landings first, because then that would give us more places to go that you could use later for space legs. Well, absolutely. So. Atmospherics is probably a higher priority. I would. I mean, much they, as we'd love to see both, I would put that one up higher. On yeah, the but they, they could they could do the derelict ships without uh, atmospheric Can't, planets, yeah. but atmospheric planets would be really nice. Yeah. Where are the damn? Planets? Yeah, Muddy Francis okay. says gardening in the space station biodome, fishing on planets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean. People also, would enjoy that. I mean, look how, look how many people are playing Farming Simulator. Of course people would enjoy that. Yeah. 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 There's so many it, potential it, things you could do. Um, farming Simulator has a huge game community. On, on yes. It's kind of crazy, really. I'm Imagine like, that in a space it setting. Does. It'd be amazeballs. Yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Like, actual getting the feeling of, you know, being a colonist, having to sustain yourself somewhere. I mean, it doesn't perfectly fit into the gameplay of Elite Dangerous, but it would be a cool aspect if you could make it work somehow. What is, uh, what um, else is chat saying? Well, you know, there's a curious thing, because, I mean, the, the, the Pilots' Federation is a thing. Yeah, it, it's people that fly spaceships, but the point of the Pilots' Federation is it's a group of very skilled, exceptionally skilled individuals who are available to do jobs that uh, other people won't or don't want to do. And so they ask the Pilots' Federation members to do it because they know they can trust them and they deliver results. Now, there's nothing to stop you from extending that from just being a commander of a spaceship to being someone that could arrive on a colony on the planet's surface and they say, oh, thank goodness, it's someone from the Pilots' Federation. We've got this problem. And you could go and sort out a problem for them. 
Yeah. Which could very quickly turn repetitive again, but you know, it there's could. ways to prevent that. Could. Potentially. I like what Ares, uh, Ares Ponies just mm -hmm. uh, said. Uh, even things like Aurora Borealis, comets, meteors, and accretion dish should come before space legs. I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but, again, there needs to be gameplay with those as well. It can't just be yeah. an aesthetic thing because it's really easy for them to put these aesthetic things in. Like, look at the notable stellar phenomenon. Where the hell are they? I can't find I them. So what if there's some well, frickin' asteroid, uh, some some comets? Great. Oh, look, I found a comet. Out of a thousand jumps, I found one. It's so pretty. And move on, and you can't do anything with it. I want... There's got to be gameplay associated with all of that stuff. So it would be really cool to see that. Believe me, I want to see it. But... But given, given Elite's history, I think they'll give us those without gameplay. But they will put them in. They will put them in. Put them in. But without gameplay. But yeah, as far as you know, you know trouble, stellar trouble, phenomena go, phone. from uh, waypoint eight to nine on distant worlds, I found I think three Earth-like worlds, and I, I wasn't like stopping all the time. I was just just jumping there and looking at the map from time to time. I found three Earth-like worlds and still no notable stellar phenomena in all the time from the bubble to waypoint nine, excluding the ones that are actually at the waypoints because they have notable stellar phenomena. I found one system with notable stellar phenomena. Well, at least you found one. <laughs> just, just saying. Just, just one. Just yeah. saying. And, Are you jumping on economical? From the bubble to waypoint nine. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not quite that bad. Yeah. <sighs> hundreds and hundreds of jumps. That's all I have to say. Yeah. To be honest, Josh, I think jumping on economical actually hinders you because <laughs> if you're in a region where there, for some reason, is a lower concentration of notable stellar phenomena, then you're gonna stay in that region way, way too long to, you know, actually see them at some point. We're not friends anymore. I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't echo, handle the truth. Well, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a thing, definitely. Is that I mean, I, I, Tato's the one that knows this kind of stuff because I mean, the way that the the sectors are, you, you can see it on your what you're looking at there, really. The way the sectors are procedurally generated depends on the seed and the very and the numbers and names of, of these systems do actually have some meaning, and you can find the weird some weird stuff based on the the letter code of the systems. But it does depend on what the the seeds were and things like you see, you've got an awful lot of. Uh, o and B, well, certainly B stars out there in that bright chunk in front of you, and there's not any in the in the sector next door because that's just the way the seed was generated and how it's done. Screw the it seeds. Be that the same rule applies for stellar phenomena. So if you're in a place that has none, you're going to keep finding none because there aren't any to find. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, but I just wonder. I do just wonder. Well, I'm pretty sure you're. Onto something there, Turchin. I'm certainly not disagreeing. I, uh, I, I don't know. I don't that's... have the numbers. All I can say is on my travels so far on distant worlds, I found one system. And a lot of Earth like worlds. So they're a lot rarer <laughs> Earth like worlds are notable stellar phenomena. Look at these damn asteroid clusters. Okay, where is. Yeah. There we go. High metal content. High metal content. Give me the money. Come on. Give it to me. Yes. More, 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 more. That's it? That's all you got for me? And a rocky body. I'll take it. I'll take it all. All right. What do we got here? Something, something notable? No, no, no terraformables. All right, moving right along. Oh, let's not get too close to that star, shall we? Don't want to burn myself up and go down to 38%. Oh, wait, that can never happen. Which <laughs> of you left, sir? Yeah, you don't. No, that can't happen. No, you fixed my own cardinal point in space. 
I see what you're saying, though. I mean, like, if one sector has just been seeded so that it doesn't have notable stellar phenomenon... Or less of them. It does, I, I'm pretty sure they are everywhere, but I am I know that they are much more common around Nebula, for example. And maybe there might be some oh. other factors as well. You know, you're know, nowhere near a Nebula, but, but maybe I, there are some I other factors a, um, increasing the chance. My theory for that one is, is that people are more likely to look at every system around a Nebula. So people, you know, people uh, yeah. know where people go. So... But... In a, in a small area of space, more systems are going to be explored because it's got a nebula in it. Kind of yes so and kind of no, because it, yes, it of course, be... people are checking out systems near a nebula, but then again, people are also doing millions of jumps nowhere near a nebula, Absolutely. and those should have at least found some. And I think 99% of the NSPs that, um, that have been found are near a nebula. So then or, here's the know, other thing to consider, maybe. though, Gray is if I'm on economical and I'm within a system, like within a, a sector, I'm more likely to find the one in that sector the more jumps I do within the sector. If I yeah, just, if I just fast case, route though? my way through... Because if a whole sector like a just has a certain percent chance, it could be zero, <laughs> or, yeah. you know, and but, uh, it's going to take you ages. Harry says, uh, on distant worlds, he's done the math, he says, on average a player must explore a minimum of 31,000 systems to find one notable stealth. Wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that is absolutely wow. ridiculous. Yeah. I think, I, I don't know it how many crazy. exactly, but I think I'm uh, somewhere around like 5,000 system, 5, systems explored, maybe, mm. if even. And most of those it's have been, you know, pre-NSPs, uh, so I haven't even like looked for them there or couldn't look for them there that's Jesus. that's bonkers i don't even know what to say well, yeah, about that um, tom tom's right he says well it's actually it's actually 50 it's tom he says put up to 30 geological sites on planets i think it actually is 50 it caps out that i found 49 on one um and they were all there beforehand you know but we couldn't see them until we actually have this new mapping system we just went to planets mm. and started looking for them by eye but there must have been 50 on these things before anyway so yeah um as, as far as the maths goes the procedural maths and things i don't know i just don't know how rare these stellar phenomena are but all i can say is that from personal experience they're not common <laughs> that's all i can say yeah they certainly are not And it's okay if they're not common, but thirty. If it actually is something like thirty-one or thirty thousand systems, that's way too uncommon, because very few people are gonna explore that many systems ever. No, it's like it's yeah. like a legendary loot drop from a boss, isn't it? Well, even that, you don't have to kill thirty thousand. <laughs> thirty-one thousand. Yeah. Uh, Believe me, I know. I'm a huge fan of Diablo. Um, actually, yes. speaking of <laughs> Diablo, I noticed on um, on Steam today that Wolson has just gone to beta. Wolson being oh, the uh, Diablo that. type uh, Diablo esque game. It's uh, an action RPG. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I may have played on it on the stream. You did. Yeah. You once, did. Yeah. once upon yeah. a time. I remember it. Uh, what do we that got? That looked quite interesting. Know? So I, I'm, I'm curious, uh, it's a 13, talk about 13 gigabytes, it's a 13 gigabyte download uh, to update it to the beta, but uh, apparently they've added in new skill trees and new animations and all kinds of cool stuff into it. So uh, I'm a huge Diablo fan. Uh, I've been dying for Diablo 4 to be announced, but we're just not there yet. And um, uh, I'm definitely well, going to check out Wilson again. The... Uh, the textures when you when you streamed it, I was thinking that it, it would look very gorgeous. So I'm not surprised that uh, any patch would quite be quite large because it's going to have an awful lot of probably 4K textures in it. It's, so again, they, it's, do, they do pop up space. It's made with Unreal, um, so it has incredible physics and like all kinds of materials and stuff uh, effects in it. Um, and it is one of the very few games that you play, and it actually feels like a Diablo game like in its core it feels like a Diablo game but it has some very unique uh, sort of gameplay elements to it that I like a lot uh, what yeah. have we got here Star Lost stuff there so I lost. we have got a couple of water worlds here let's see ooh 
maybe a binary pair of water worlds <laughs> in each other. Tom, Tom said he will, if Space Lakes was a point and click, find the object adventure, that would be funny. I'd like that. I'm perverse, I'd like that. <laughs> yeah, two water worlds. Perfect. You get out your ship and it suddenly turns into a point and click adventure. <laughs> Terraforming candidate, too. Or, or just a text adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your space legs, so you can read all about them. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping that's not the way it works, but... I said that first, Scorp. Can't steal my comment. Uh, Dob says he went from Daisy Cities to the Crab Nebula by every, every nebula on the way. Saw no NSPs and every single bio site was Bark Mounds. Yeah, I just looked at that, that must too, get, so. That must get grindy after I go, oh no, not Bark Mounds again. <laughs> now we have a text based adventure in chat going on. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. All right, read it out. Let's hear. <laughs> the Scorps is, is imitating how it would be if, if Space Legs yeah. was a text based adventure. Go north. You see a hangar door. Open door. The door is locked. Use key pass on door. <laughs> 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 As Tom says, I don't understand open door. <laughs> I miss text based adventures. Those were a lot of fun. What? They were. The, yeah. There was there was one, uh, one of the first ones that I ever played way, way back. Uh, I don't remember if this was on a Commodore or. Uh, oh, crap. I just shot off a probe accidentally. Um, misfire. I think it was on my uh, my Commodore, and I will tell you that I started playing this game, and it was the most frustrating thing ever to try and get past just the very first room. And what happened was, in the room, the only door was an elevator door, and you would get into the elevator, and the elevator would start dropping. And for the love of Christ, it took me months to figure out that the only way to not die when the elevator began dropping was to jump with one or two seconds before the elevator hit the first floor. <laughs> you had to type in the word jump. And I was like, I don't know if jumping would really save you nope. if the elevator falls 15 or 20 stories. Like, <laughs> jump one second before it crashes. Okay, well, you're still going to have the impact of the elevator. You're just going to jump and remove maybe like a couple of feet per second from your, your velocity. Yeah, so, it. anyhow, that was the secret. Just jump. It's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy that I finally figured it out, mind you, but uh, it was very frustrating. Yeah, the Hobbits. I, 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 Tom, Tom, I, I played the Hobbit on a BBC Model B at the same time as I played the first Elite. So my cousin brought them both up for. A, I played. Uh, what was it called? And that was crazy to play. The was Hobbit. the the English title might have been Baphomet's Curse? No, probably not. I think the English title was a bit different to the German one, but it was with a. A dude and a, I remember a girl, like a, a journalist, named Nicole, I think it was? Oh, yes. Um, oh, what was its I name? Was, the I German name I, was Baphomet's was Blue. Something to, do, but... something to do with the Templars, but I can't... I can't yeah, exactly, that. exactly. And that was super cool because my dad played that and I played it after him. And that was my first experience with, I've, you know, I've, a point I've and click. Up on a... Broken Sword, yes! Broken, Broken Sword, sword thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I wonder why that, that was German it. title is so much different to the English one. Kind of weird. Because, oh. you know, the German title translates to Baphomet's Curse. Yeah. But yeah, I do, I do, I do remember that one. I've got them up on a, a, a shelf in another room. Ancient old big boxes for DOS games, yes. That was good. That was a very good game because it was done by... Um, um, I think it was Disney Animators, ex Disney Animators did that. So it was some wonderful animation in that one. It was a very, very good, deep, deep story. Although the puzzles were. Different. Yeah, I remember there's some <laughs> they were different. really tough ones that I could not figure out. There might have been a Goat Scorp, yes. Uh, there was another text based game. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, I kept coming across this rattlesnake, and uh, there was no way around it. 
and every time I would get bit by the rattlesnake no matter what I tried. And then mm -hmm. eventually I figured out that you had to explore another area and capture a mongoose and then unleash the mongoose <laughs> on the rattlesnake. <laughs> and the mongoose would kill the rattlesnake. Yeah. My my sense of satisfaction when I unleashed that mongoose and it killed the snake, yes. I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> well, you, you remember these things. These are the pivotal moments in yeah. the gaming history. These yeah. little things like that. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Damn mongoose! It's a good thing there was a mongoose there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like Very handy. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how safe it is to capture a mongoose and put it into your bag. <laughs> it's like into your into your pocket. Yeah, I I don't know. Yeah, it's more dangerous, a mongoose yeah. or a rattlesnake. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like maybe the mongoose would be more dangerous than the rattlesnake. Really. <laughs> Certainly smarter, but. <laughs> Apparently this was a very friendly mongoose, and hungry for rattlesnakes. So. <laughs> oh, text-based games. No graphics. None whatsoever. Are there still any text-based games that people play nowadays? I'm curious. If, if you in chat have recently, I mean within the past couple of years, played a text-based game, please let us know what it is and why you enjoyed playing it. <laughs> You've been bitten by the mongoose, you die of rabies, says <laughs> Scorpion. <Right. laughs> yeah, but they got to give you at least like three or four turns before you die. You know, it's, <laughs> it doesn't happen right away. <laughs> Damn. That would be kind of mean, you know, <laughs> let, letting you continue the game, be like, yeah, I got this, I made it past this part, and then just you randomly die after a few turns, like, no explanation. Or afterwards, you died of rabies. <laughs> Danny Power says Twitter. Yeah, that's sort of a <laughs> text-based <laughs> game. <laughs> Back in the early 90s, I ran, ran an online BBS. Oh, my God. Oh, BBSs. Yes. Trade Wars, my favorite BBS game ever. Oh, Zork, yeah, Leather Goddesses of Phobos. Phobos. Course. We all remember these classics, yeah. I'm sure some of you guys must have played Trade Wars. I mean, space trading, base building, defense. Did you guys play Trade Wars? Did, ever? No, did I play that? No, but I had other games in that you know, general area, general kind of games. Man, we actually had, on our, at our school, we had um, two or three guys, I think it was, develop a browser game you know, was it, it was called deep serious i think it might still be going in a very reduced form not sure it was you know basically just a resource gathering building fleets attacking other people kind of amazing actually hmm. we got no terraformables all right moving right along we're making our way, folks. What is that? So it was like 5.6, and it's about 450 jumps per leg. So, uh, yeah, we'll be there. A few weeks. We'll get there. Sell off all this data for y'all. Do you want to see just one stream of selling data? I can't imagine that's going to be very exciting, though. And watching you exploring is? Hey! Hey! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see your point. But it's you, at least you could maybe find something exploring. You don't find anything selling data. Well, you almost maybe found something for the last, what, five streams? Almost maybe, yeah. Almost maybe. Ah, oh, well, what can you do? Is that it? Just asteroid club. Well, if it's really 31,000 systems before you, you know, statistically find a notable stellar phenomena, you might as well do something else at this point. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. 
<laughs> Nothing else to do. It's like, almost feels like I'm more likely to find a notable stellar phenomenon just by selling my data than I would actually coming across one. Yeah, I mean, at least you got a couple thousand systems have a head start there, yeah. Philip Hoffer says we're here for the conversation, not for the game running in the background. Well, I'm very sorry, Philip. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible waste of time. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, no, no, that's that's very nice of you to say. Thank you very much. Actually, that it, sh it should be Turgeon and Greatest that say thank you. I don't even do much of the talking. I'm just like a passive member of the crew. <laughs> <laughs> You're just providing the visual backdrop. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> says, I'm here for the gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God someone's here for the gameplay. <laughs> We're not that entertaining. <laughs> metal. High metal content. High metal content. What the hell? What the hell? Rocky bodies. I could, if I was on Twitch, I could play music at the same time. Right? How is it that people on Twitch can play whatever music that they want to? How does that work exactly? Because the videos are not permanently uploaded, I think. It's like a vanity thing. Not sure. Is that is that the difference? I, Just I, I don't I, know. I thought they are. Ask a Twitcher. Hey, Twitchies. <laughs> when, when do you guys got to know the answer to this? Someone in chat know why Twitch streamers can play whatever the hell music they want to and not have to worry about like copyrights and stuff? Because I am pretty sure that Twitch stores videos. Pretty sure. At least for a certain time, yes, they, they can be oh, watched. Spooky saying Twitch has stopped you playing music now. Oh, God, okay. I, I feel bad for some of those streamers then. That's like the only enjoyable part of their streams. You, you log on, there's like three people watching. They're just listening to the beats. <laughs> they don't care what the game is. <laughs> You know what I like? I like, um, oh, what's it called? On the Xbox, they have it. Um, it's one of those streaming services, but <clears throat> I watch PUBG on it, and they have, um, uh, da -da -da -da, they call it the something zone, um, hype zone, that's it. And what it does is it automatically jumps between streams of player unknown battlegrounds, and it jumps to the very last uh, circle. So like as it's coming up on the final circle and there's only like two or three <laughs> people left, you get to watch that final showdown uh, between the people that are there. And um, and as soon as the game ends, it it switches over to another game automatically. It's the greatest it's kind of PUBG. cool and also kind of mean. I mean, it's a good chance for, you know, some random streamers to get some attention. Yeah. But it's also, I don't know kind of taken away from the whole package a streamer might deliver. It's just, you know, here's some action and let's... Yeah, but the good thing is, like, because the Hype Zone has, like, usually multiple people watching it, I mean, there's, like, could be 300 or 400 people mm -hmm. watching, as soon as the Hype Zone enters into a random person's stream, they're like, oh, subscribe, 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 and, like, the guy literally will get, like, 300 subs within a matter of seconds because... I mean, yeah, for that's, of course, very cool. But again, you know, those subs are probably not very permanent if the streamer, <laughs> you know, impossible. can't show what he's actually doing if yeah. they just there for a minute. But yeah, if these subs come back and actually, you know, watch that stuff, it, it might help them out. It's a cool way to distribute some subs and attention. It's it's certainly a, an interesting way to discover new people, um, yeah. you know, that, that you maybe otherwise would never have uh, but i mean I, I feel like it would be very intense and very stressful to have such a drop happen on you while you're in the circle because then you have to deliver you know you have to be the, good the, the tension <laughs> is there yeah but it's it's cool because like people Pressure's are really on. excited they'll be playing they'll be like oh hype zone all right hype zone's here <laughs> I would freak out, man. Some of these Suddenly, guys... like, a, a, a few thousand people watching how you try to stay, stand your ground in the last battles. Kind of frightening. Morbius, Dr. Morbius says, I think Twitch turns off audio on stored streams when possible copyright issues, but only for a section of the video. Huh. 
Okay, that's smart. Rather than taking down the entire stream, makes sense. Fuel scooping complete. Come on, notable stellar phenomena. Give it to me. Holy moly. Is that for your concert? <laughs> if I could turn the camera right now and show you guys what my wife is wearing for a concert that she's going to be doing, uh, I would get a lot of additional subscribers. <laughs> and demonetized. De <laughs> <Possibly, possibly. laughs> well, no, because she'll be wearing this for a show. There's going to be plenty of people <laughs> watching her sing, but... Well, that's, that Woo! doesn't mean that it's safe for advertisers on YouTube, you know? <laughs> very, very nice. I like it. Do I get to come to that show? Yeah? My wife's a singer, for those of you who don't know. And she just got booked for a show in August. She's got to fly out there. They're flying her out to uh, some cool, cool show. Nice. And being a woman, she's already trying on outfits. <laughs> Wait, she's doing preparation? How, how is she married to you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. I have no idea. She does all the preparation in this in this family. <laughs> <laughs> I want to turn the camera for you guys, but uh, it's too far away. Sorry. <laughs> I can't say that, Josh, and not show us. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 you, Watch you, me. You <laughs> next week. Yeah, Dakota's saying week. if I could wear the outfit next week. <laughs> <laughs> um, her her skirts or her shirts barely even fit one of my arms. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> I could put, like, her skirt would fit my foot like a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd just be Hulk Hawkins. <laughs> Hulk Hawkins. Hulk angry. <laughs> I was folding laundry yesterday, and... Um, I'm folding up some of her shirts and I pick it up and I, I, I think it's like a hat because it's so tiny and it's like a shirt. <laughs> like, what in the hell is this? Is this a shirt? <laughs> They're very small. If I tried to even attempted to wear one of her outfits, it would be disastrous. But hilarious. <laughs> hey, where the hell? Come on. Give me the high metal content. Oh, maybe we have a water world here as well. Maybe, possibly. There yep. we go. Looks like it. Looks like it. Water world. Yep. We got a water world. Where yet? Nope. Bum, 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 bum. There it is. 139 light seconds. Perfect. Let's go get her. Let's go get her. Let's see if she's terraformable. Uh, what do we got? It is a terraforming candidate. Booyah! I'm in the money. Well, we're less than 400 jumps now, so made some decent progress today. Kind of, sort of. Yet no notable Ish. stellar phenomenon. But you, you've got a direction to travel in now. Thanks yep. to chat. They've, they've told you where, where you want to go. Yes. Chat has given me direction. And I will keep going there until we get there. And then we'll sell all the data and have a big old data party. <laughs> That'll be fun and exciting, won't it? All right. Let's scan another planet. Oh, or let's zip past it. Come on, slow down. You can do it. There we go. Never do quite understand how the FSDs work sometimes when you're 
cruising past a planet and how you could just be like right beside it and put your engines up a little bit too much and all of a sudden you're flying past the planet and you can't slow down. There's something weird about that. It's actually not because while you're approaching the planet you are already continuously slowing down so accelerate just a tad bit more you you pass that point where you can't slow down fast enough anymore and then you suddenly you know shoot past the planet very quickly hmm. Hmm. i don't accept this it's not a logical explanation i guarantee you it's mathematically sound <laughs> it's mathematically sound okay um who would love to see the auto slowing down feature removed from Elite Dangerous? It can't be removed because it's an essential part. The deeper you are in a gravity well, the slower you can go. Um, so you, when, when you enter a gravity well, you have to slow down. The deeper you are in a gravity well, the slower mm -hmm. you go. Yes. Okay, but you know, like, this, um, let's say, for example, here, we have a planet that's a thousand light seconds away, okay? Mm -hmm. I immediately start flying towards it. As I'm flying towards it, I begin to speed up. At the halfway mm -hmm. point, my ship automatically starts slowing down without me doing anything at all. Yeah, because you are going deeper into the gravity well again. Yeah, but would you not expect that to speed you up because you're flying towards the planet no, and the gravity? It just no, no, no. That's not what I mean with a gravity well. Okay, it, explain. the speed you can go in in you know super cruise for fast and light travel, whatever, um, is just dependent on how deep you are in a gravity well. That that only means the distance. It doesn't like have any potential energy if you drop down into a gravity well, like, you know, proper orbital physics would dictate. Mm -hmm. um, it just means the closer you are to a massive object, the slower your potential speed is that you can go. Of course, you can sort of go super speed, you know, so, like some people do when they do these these ring tricks, when they go super fast through a set of rings around a gas giant. Mm -hmm. um, but that only works because your ship can only decelerate so quickly. So yes, you can carry some momentum into a gravity well, but only to a certain extent, and you need you know, a big chunk of it up ahead. Now, is that but, because you know, the stretching well, of space-time in the gravity well? Is well, that... that's it. I mean, space Probably, is, maybe, I don't know. There, that, that's, that your, your supercruise is, is an Alcubierre bubble, because if you think you're actually traveling at, at faster than light speed... Right. Um, essentially, you know, by the time you get faster than light speed, gravity it get kind of gives up at light speed. Oh, hold on, what, what, just looked at. Oh no, sorry. there's nothing I thought on that. Might be <laughs> Not far enough over. But yeah, um, once once you sort of like get over light speed, you know, gravity is. It's not really a thing beyond that point. So yeah, it's about masses and folding and space time and stuff. So. So it's it's if, space if time is stretched in a, a gravity grab well. So yeah, because your Alcubierre bubble can't can't fold as efficiently when it's got bumps in it. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's kind of like think, I'm finding an excuse. I'm making so I, the, the only thing that I can think is this: maybe it's kind of like running. Uh, yeah. Running on a treadmill, we'll, and as the the, the treadmill, we'll, we'll we'll see him in a couple of minutes, won't we? Go over there and see him, all of us. Yes, we'll uh, we'll be going to visit Scorb as soon as Yes, running on a treadmill. Planet. Go on, sir. Uh, yes, so the, the, the more the more space is stretched, the faster the treadmill is going, the faster you need to run in order to actually increase your own acceleration if you wanted to move forward on the treadmill. Essentially, it's like that makes a lot of sense. That that's the the only way I can kind of picture what we're talking about, you know. So like, if space is stretched, the treadmill is going faster, and in order to actually speed up, you would have to run faster on that same treadmill uh, if you wanted to move on the stretched space. Yes. And on that note, you should consider doing your outro. Yeah. Uh, what time is it? Ninety-five. Huh? Uh, Fifty-nine, rather. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ninety-five. Yeah. Uh, one more planet to scan, and then we'll go ahead and do that. And there it is. The merit of German numbers in your head. 
<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, once again, you have survived another broadcast. Congratulations. Let's go ahead and put up the sponsor list because this show is sponsored. And uh, we're going to go out and read that off along with our outro music. So we'll see you guys next Saturday. Here's our uh, sponsor list. Thank you to all of these fine, wonderful individuals. That would be Brandon's Chorus, Korax, Malik, Xanthia, Scorb, Darb, Keith, Sin, Daedalus, Dead Star, Giz, Binary Stars, Tato Chip, Luchi, Coffee, Liger, C Max, Miss Limit, New Cooper, Prime Top, Casual, Utah, Kura, Kenshi, Kobayashi, Spatula, Spooky, James, Takoso, Commander, Abira, Nix, Powerhouse, Top Blazer, Hank, Speedstorm, Theodore, Bauer, and this is Commander Josh Hawkins, signing off.